Good evening, Maddie. Thank you for coming on Sports Talk with C. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. First, I want to congratulate you on all your accolades this year. I did see you at the Big East tournament, so I'm glad I get to see you play. It was seeing you play, and I can't wait for next year. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. So tell me a little bit about yourself and what it was it like growing up in New York? Um, I'm the oldest of four. Uh, I went to um, public high school, uh, grammar school, and then I went to Catholic high school. Uh, I've been playing basketball seriously since probably like seventh grade. Um, but before that, I played all like a bunch like soccer. I danced. I did a little bit of everything. Um, but then in high school, I just really focused on basketball. And what, why did you focus on basketball? Was it because you liked it more than other sports? Was it because your dad played? Did I read that right? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, he played. So obviously I wanted to play like, to be like him in a way, but um, I was also really tall. So it was like, you know, naturally everyone's like, oh, you play basketball. And, and I liked it the most. Like I was really competitive at a young age. So basketball, I liked it because it just was like the whole game. You're like, it's not like softball where you have to wait. And it's like, you know, you get to just go, go, go. Would you say as a kid, besides your dad, who else did you look up to as a player or a role model? Um, well, I grew up in Poughkeepsie, so Marist College was the big, like, school around me. Um, so we, I grew up going to all those games. Oh, so nice. uh, they had a player, Rachel Fitz, who was, like, one of their best players ever, um, who I just thought was, like, a god. Um, <laughs> so I could watch her play all the time. Um, she was an unbelievable player. And then my high school coach's daughter actually went to Villanova, and she was probably – uh, like I never really watched her play but I she was the best best player I knew like oh, personal wow. yeah so I was like wow like that's she went to Villanova like that's crazy <laughs> yeah right I'm like Billy yeah that's the school yeah. so what would you say would be your favorite basketball moment you experienced in high school um probably either like scoring my thousand point like that was really special because it was like the last home game of the year or like my senior year, the last home game, we beat like one of the rival schools and like a sold out jam. That, that was a really cool atmosphere. Was that like, the oh, day that you had 45 points and 22 rebounds? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't no, that day. No, it wasn't that day. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, we had like five seniors who had all been on varsity since we were freshmen. So that was like, that was really special that game. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, because you averaged 32.7 points per game, 13.1 rebounds. What goes through your mind when you're shooting? Like, what is, because you just let it go. You do get buckets, so. Just, you know, just think everyone's going in. Uh, you know, obviously, you realize, like, is it a good shot? If it's a good shot, great, take it. And then, you know, some people like to judge, like, is it a good shot by if it goes in or not? And, like, as a, you know, shooter score, you have to have the mentality you know, you're going to take the same shots no matter what. The ball's eventually going to go in. And as long as you're taking the shots you're used to, then it's just like, all right, you do the best you can. You're taking the good shots. Uh, and then so when they, but when they don't fall, like, what do you do? I would be so mad. I don't know how you guys do it. I'd be like, you know what? F this. I'm not doing it no more. <laughs> um, Just like that mentality. Like, you just keep telling yourself, like, all right, you take good shots. Try to rebound, screen get your teammates some good looks. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's frustrating, but then just knowing that like, if you had a bad first half or second half, like it's not going to carry over. Just knowing right. that, like, you know, it, it just because you miss shots doesn't mean, you know, you're doing anything wrong. It's just, you know, you're rushing and you can make little adjustments, but I, you try not to do anything too differently. Okay. Keep that in mind. I mean, I don't play, but <laughs> that's when I want to give out some advice, I'm going to keep yeah, that yeah. in mind. Sure. What made you choose Villanova and was your process difficult, easy, stressful? Uh, I would say it was pretty good. I mean, I wasn't like very highly recruited during high school. So it wasn't like, I mean, I, I ended up with a lot of offers, but not not from the beginning. They weren't until like sophomore, junior year. So it wasn't like I it was, this is something I was dealing with since eighth grade. Um, so, you know, I, I enjoyed it. I took a lot of my visits and stuff like that. And then, you know, Villanova was like the most, you know, I'm so exciting. I thought it was, it was my biggest offer. And I was like, you know, maybe, maybe I could play there. And you, 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 I picked it and I was like, you know what, worse, you could always transfer if you're not good enough or something's wrong. And, you know, I, I just love the people here. It's just such a special place. And, you know, I just felt that on my visit. 
Oh, that's good. See that everyone else says it's stressful. It's hard. You have been, that has been the easiest that I've heard thus far. So freshman year, going to school, roll your ankle on a, in practice, right? Yeah. How did you come back and continue to dominate, continue to be the shooter that you are and just be Maddie? Yeah. I mean, that was tough. Uh, I had to get three screws put in um, and I never really got hurt like that uh, in high school. Like that was the first big injury I had. And I was away from home. Um, I was so fortunate that the, not only my teammates here, but um, my staff, uh, the staff here, the former coach, Harry Pareto was instrumental in helping me um, just like not even like physically with the injury, just like being there, like, to making sure I was engaged to practice because I would sit there and you know we run a motion so as a freshman you don't really understand it to begin with and then all of a sudden you're watching it you really don't understand it so you know he helped like you know teach it to me from that perspective which was really uh, beneficial at the time I it was the worst I hated watching it you know all you want to <laughs> do is be in it and then you know I right. ha- ended up having to redshirt because you know, it made the most sense. Everyone, it was the most logical. But at the time, like, I'm not redshirting. I'm not doing that. I'm coming back. I'm coming back in January. And everyone's like, you know, around me, it's like, all right, yeah, 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 we'll see. But I made sure when I was hurt uh, to really work on my shooting because from the outside, because like high school, I was so much taller than everyone that you didn't even have to shoot. And then you get to college, like everyone's as tall. So it's like, okay, you have to expand your game. So I think that's when my shooting really probably improved the most. Mm, I've never heard that usually it's they have to get back in the swing of things and you know do all that so thus far what has been your tough besides your injury what has been the toughest moment in college probably COVID I, I would think that was tough um you know, as from our team perspective an individual um we went through a coaching change our coach retired we got a new coach um, and then like meeting her through COVID was tough. And then you didn't have workouts and no one knew when you were coming back. So just like, that was just weird being away from people, like your whole team for so long, especially, you know, you're not used to that practice every day. And then it's like, you see each other on the phone, but it's not really the same. same right? uh, so I think that was tough. It's just the not knowing. And, you know, I made sure that I worked out, you know, and did kept up where, where I wanted to be. But just like, wow, like, are we going to have a season the next year? Like, you hope so, right. but you didn't really know. And then, you know, last year being almost in a bubble, like, was pretty challenging. But I think then you were just so grateful you got you got to play again. So we get to this year. <laughs> 22 season, you averaged 25.3 points, 9.2 rebounds, shooting at 49.3%. Big East player of the year and you played for the big east coach of the year how like explain the entire year how do um, I- yeah i mean this year this year was great uh it, it didn't it started a little rocky we were we were oh and two mm-hmm. and I broke my hand i fell in a scrimmage in the in the beginning and probably whatever october and i heard my hand but i didn't even it wasn't even a thought to me to think that it was anything i just was like and a few weeks later, I was shooting, and my coach was like, Natty, like, looked at my hand and was like, well, you know, didn't even think anything. She's like, you're doing something weird when you're shooting. I don't think anything of it. Play the first two games. I'm like, we, we lost both. I was really frustrated. I was like, I can't grab the ball. Like, something's wrong. I can't grab it. So, you know, and then I'm like, in my head, you're frustrated. And I fell during practice. So my hand swells up. I go to the doctor, get it checked out, and they're like, no, it's, it's broken two spots and it looks like it's been hurt for a little while and I'm like what and they're like no, no you heard it like a while and I'm like oh so then in my head I'm like wow this, this makes a little sense and then <laughs> it goes then you have to sit out and I missed six games that was tough just like because I didn't think it was broken because I'm like no I'm good guys I'm not gonna break a bone don't you feel like there should be pain yeah, no, and like then I'm like, no, like it's fine, like it's fine. Because after I fell at practice, we're doing a shooting drill next, and I airballed the first shot. I'm like, oof, like hopefully no one saw that. I think that was embarrassing. And then you know, like you know, I was like, wow, it's really, really stiff. Like it's really hurting me. Mm-hmm. Then you know, get it checked out. Ultimately, that happens, and I have to miss six games. Like those were that was a tough stretch. Um, just because it's tough when you're watching. Uh, you know, you just want to be out there so bad. We had so many young kids. 
who, you know, had never played in college basketball before. So, you, you know, I wanted to be out there, like, for them, for my teammates. And we went three and five, and that was tough. So then I, I come back, I think we're – oh, yeah, we're three and five, but I come back. We went three and three when I was out. So, like, that was just frustrating. I was just, you know, like, ugh, like – and then we just started rolling. Um, we just like went on like a mission. We were just like, we got this. We we won the four last games of December, beat Oregon State. I remember like I was like, all right, like we got this rolling into Big East. And then no one was even talking about the NCAA tournament then. We weren't even look like an NCAA tournament team. We were 0 and 2 in Big East. I think we were last for like that week. Uh, and then you know we beat Seton Hall, St. John's, both really really tough games. Seton Hall um, was a fun game. That yeah, one, that was fun. They they was they would not back down for every time you guys went yeah. on a run, Seton Hall would come on a run. I'm like, oh, but it was a great game. I mean, yeah, the only like, thing about like covering being media, I couldn't chair. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those were those were that was tough. And then I'm like, all right, like we started rolling into Big East. Um, you know, we were just like, all right, we're taking one game at a time. We lost to DePaul close without um, our starting center. So that that I was like, whoa, like, we can have, we're looking all right. We're looking pretty good right now. And then we just won a lot of close games. The whole Big East season was like that. It was like overtime, win by two. And then mm-hmm. be, beating Connecticut was was wild. Because um, we were <laughs> when playing. I five, seen that. I was like, yes. Yeah, five <laughs> games in ten days, especially playing there. Um, you know, it's like, it's nothing you've ever, like, you just prepare the best you can. But, you know, we went in with, like, we, you know, just do the best we can one play at a time. So that was really, really exciting. And then uh, with the Big East tournament, we were like, you know, then everyone's like, you're a bubble team, you're with the NCAA. So we just went in. We're like, all right, we'll take it one game at a time. We ended up getting to the championship, which was great. And then, you know, the week of limbo in between is like, you know, no one knows. Some people think you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. And then, uh, watching we were literally like the last one of the last Team, teams yep. called in the last bracket we're watching like i'm like pretty sure i'm like if we're having a party like i would think like you know we're gonna get picked and luckily we did but it, it was it was exciting, it was exciting. Sure. Um, i can't wait to act, see you guys next year so what would speaking of ncaa double tournament i read an article where it says your main goal for a college is to win a ship championship so yeah what do you would you say for your own self to prepare yourself for next year what would be some things that you would want to work on so you can achieve that goal definitely uh just try to get a little bit um stronger just like physically stronger like put on a little bit of muscle like weight um you know that's definitely the biggest thing and just continue you know playing with my teammates you know, helping the younger kids the best I can. And then just, you know, just growing my overall game. I think every year you try to add, add an aspect to your game to some element. I really worked on my mid-range last season, you know, and want to continue to work on that. And, you know, with the ball, you want to be able to score the ball in your hands, out of your hands, and, you know, just become a, a stronger passer out of, like, the double teams and stuff like that. Nice. And if a young baller had asked you for any advice to play – college basketball what would you say to them I would say that work hard and remember that everybody's path is different so just because some other person on your team might be in AAU might have a million offers doing this 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 like just worry about yourself focus on you and be the best you can be okay and for yourself what are your goals in the next five years or after college um well, I'm in my master's right now okay. in education, so nice. definitely to finish that degree, get my master's in education, and then, you know, I have some hopes, hopefully, to, you know, be able to play professionally, whether it's here or overseas, so, you know, definitely try that out for a little while. You're going you're gonna to be a professional <laughs> somewhere. I can, when you get buckets, you definitely will, Maddie, um, but thank you for coming on Sports Stuff with C. I really appreciate you giving me your time and answering my questions, and you have a good evening, okay? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.